I'm going to take a brief survey. And uh, in order to do that, I don't want to embarrass anybody. So everybody will just kind of bow your head and close your eyes. But to my answers, I want you to be truthful and honest before the Lord. And uh, you'll know what this is about in just a little bit. But <clears throat> the qu first question is this. First of all, Brother Ed, how many do we have in attendance today? 18. 18, all right. Of the 18, we'll probably remove Addie and KK. So we have 16, yes, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So of the 16 that are here, how many of you love Jesus? Just lift your hand. All right. Second question is this. How many of you have read your Bible at least once in your lifetime? between Genesis and Revelation, the entire Bible. The entire Bible from Genesis to Revelation, at least once. Keep your hands up. All right, I got it. Hang on, hang on. Lift them up, hold them up. You've read your whole Bible all the way through from Genesis all the way to Revelation. I want to make sure I clarified that. Okay. All right, how many of you have read at least all the Old Testament at least once. <laughs> okay. How many of you have read all the New Testament at least once all the way through? And how many of you read at least one chapter a day? You can say that. All right, let's, let's broaden that same question. How many of you at least read one chapter a week? All right. And finally, how many of you read at least one verse per day? to those results in a little while. <laughs> you have your Bibles and you stand with me. That's the first question. Is, how many of you have your Bibles today? I'm going to be ready Thursday night. That's all I'm saying. Paperback. I'm not talking about your phone. I want to see a paperback Thursday. Or another day. Alright. James chapter 1 Verses 21 through 22. The scripture says, Wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Now the complete Jewish Bible reads, uh, verse 21 this way. So rid yourselves of all vulgarity and obvious evil and receive meekly the word capitalized implanted in you that can save your lives. Don't deceive yourselves by only hearing what the word capitalized says, but do it. Amen. You may be seated. And this is going to be a little different today. <clears throat> it fits the atmosphere, so we're good to go. So I'm, I'm going to talk to you about the implanted word. Okay? And so, in, in reading the complete Jewish Bible, receive meekly the word implanted in you. So the first question I asked was, so how is the word implanted to you? How does that happen? How is it implanted? And... John chapter 1, verses 1 through 4 and verse 14. The Word says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, 
And without him was not anything made that was made. And verse 14 says, And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of, or as if, if, there is, if, if, the, if the father could have a son, that's what as of means, as of the only begotten of the father, full of grace and truth. So in this particular passage, the word, capital W, was God, and then it was made into Jesus the Christ. And I separate those, and, and, and I've I, I felt this way for years now. When I, when I, it's difficult uh, when you're trying to relay something that you say Jesus Christ, because uh, Christ interprets the anointed one. And so every time you say Jesus Christ, Jesus the anointed one. And, and that's fine. But if you back up and take a better look at it, we know that Jesus is God and that Jesus existed before we saw Him. Right? Okay, and so it, I find it preferable and I almost feel it in my spirit to say Jesus the Christ when I'm referring to His body. When I'm referring to His manhood, when I'm referring to Him as the Son of God, it makes me want to say Jesus the Christ. When I'm praying to Him now, I don't say Jesus Christ because that body's dead. I say Jesus. Okay? Now, so we know that the Word was God. It was with God. It was right there in the beginning. It was just God was Word. And, and then all of a sudden, it burst forth. Let there be. There was nothing, and all of a sudden, the Word was let there be. And all the creation started happening. Okay, and then you get to Colossians chapter 1, verses 12 through 15. The scripture says, Giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness, and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. And so God, the Word, needed an image. And we have Jesus, the Christ, step onto the scene. Okay? So Jesus, the man, was God's mouth to humanity. He was God's lips from whence His Word came into the hearing of all men. Okay? So His Word was out there in space. But He needed a mouthpiece. And so He created Him a body. The Holy Ghost overshadowing Mary and planting that righteous seed. She gave forth the Son. And all of a sudden, God had lips. It's okay. It's kind of humorous. True. God had lips. We could actually look at God when He talked. He had lips. John chapter 12, verse 44 through 50, reads like this. Jesus cried and said, He that believeth on Me, believeth not on Me, but on Him who sent Me. And he that seeth Me, seeth Him that sent Me. I am come a light into the world, that whosoever believeth on Me should not abide in darkness. And if any man hear my words and believe not, he said, I judge him not. Jesus said, I'm not judging. The Christ said, I'm not judging him. For I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. He that rejecteth me, the Christ, and receiveth not my words, hath one that judgeth him the word that I have spoken. The same shall judge him in the last day. For I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me, he gave me a commandment, what I should say, and what I should speak. And I know that his commandment is life everlasting, whatsoever I speak, therefore, even as the Father said unto me, so I speak. Now, Jesus, the Christ, the Lamb, the flesh, came into the world to die in order to save sinful man. We get that. But the Word that was in Him 
will one day judge man. And so there's a oneness, but then there's also a little distinction here. The flesh said, I didn't come to judge you. I came to save you. The body, the lamb had to die in order for us to be saved. That's why the body came. But the word came so that we would have life everlasting and so that one day when judgment day came, the word would stand in judgment and say, I told you what you needed to know. I told you what you needed to do. I spoke to you. Okay? Now, John chapter 17 verses 6 through 8 says this, I have manifested thy name and this is Jesus praying, the flesh praying to the Spirit, praying to the Father and Spirit. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me. And they have kept thy word. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me. And they, are, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came out from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. And I want to bring some clarity to the send me portion. Okay? John chapter 8, verses 31 through 32, the scripture says, Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, that's what Jesus said, If you continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So for all those who want to go quoting, I know the truth, and the truth will make me free. Are you continuing in His Word? Because if you're not continuing in His Word, you're not His disciple. And if you're not His disciple, you don't know the truth. If you don't know the truth, the truth can't make you free. It's simple. It reads left and right and right to left. That's how beautiful the Word of God is. If this statement is true, then the opposite is also true. John chapter chapter 17, verses 13 through 19. And now I came to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. Jesus said, I'm full of joy. And, I, and I'm speaking these things in the world so that my joy could also be in them. I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from evil. Don't take them out, but keep them. They that are not of the world, even as I am not of the world, sanctify them through thy truth. And now he says, thy word is truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, here you go, as thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. That, to me, is one of the most revelational wow. pieces of Scripture in, in the book. He says, I'm going to send them into the world just like you sent me into the world. So for those who say Jesus Christ existed as a second person or uh, some other deity alongside the main deity or one of the three deities, how, four, five, six, seven, eight, whatever, however many they got, they say that the Lord, or God, the Father, sent the Son into the world. They're, they're thinking He sent Him from up there into the world, but that's not what He did. What He did was, okay... It's now time for you to come out of Na uh, 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 Bethlehem and Nazareth. It's time for you to come out of there and go into the world and preach the gospel. When did that happen? At 30. When he was a 30-year-old man, then the Lord said, now it's time. He kicked him in gear at a wedding. Now it's time. So Jesus said, just as my Father sent me with a, with a mission, I also send them with a mission. I sent my disciples with a mission. Just as my Father sent me with a mission, I'm sending my disciples with a mission. Another great understanding right there in one, just one verse. It says, I sent them into the world. Just as you sent me into the world, I sent them into the world. Okay, that doesn't mean, that I, that's not saying that the Father sent the Son into the earth. No. It's saying the Father commissioned the Son. Remember when He said, I must be about my Father's business? Mm -hmm. That's what He was saying. All right, now John chapter 14, and I love the book of John chapter 14. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. 
If he had known me, he should have known my Father also. Now notice, in the previous reading, he says, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth, right? Did he say that? Your word is truth. But then right here he says, I am the way and the truth. Jesus says, I am the truth. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also, and from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. Come here, Judah. Come here, bud. Now, in this relationship right here, I'm the Father. And this is my Son. Now, I cannot tell you that when you've seen Judah, you've seen me. Because. There's a little relation there, a little familiarity, but I'm like five times his size. So when you've seen Judah, you have not seen me. Right? So if I'm, if I'm out in the picture and there's Judah, you can't, you don't know what I look like. You haven't seen me. Right? If he's my, that's my son. You can't say that. But, you can sit down, buddy. Thank you. So, so, but if I say, when you have seen me, you have seen the Father? Then I'm, I'm confirming Colossians when I say I'm the visible image of the invisible God. When you've seen me, you've seen the Father. In every point of Scripture where Jesus says, Father, or He says, I am the Son, this, this relationship fundamental that he's trying to explain to us, he's simply trying to relate to us because he came as an example too. He's trying to relate to us how we should interact with our Heavenly Father. Okay? But he was the Father in the flesh. And there are moments when he is speaking out of his flesh that he is referencing his spiritual Father. The place from which he came. The creator of heaven and earth. John 14, 15 through 18 says this. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter. That he may abide with you forever. Now why did he say that? Why, why did Jesus, the Christ, the flesh, the man. Why did he say he's going to give you another comforter that may abide with you forever? Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him. So how they know him in the world didn't. You know him, for he dwelleth with you. And shall be in you. He said, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Don't you want to say, Jesus, just stop talking in riddles and say it. <laughs> That's what his disciples kept doing. <laughs> Lord, would you just stop talking in parables and just say it? And he said, okay, I'll open your understanding so that you understand what I'm trying to tell you. I am he. It's me, ladies and gentlemen. I am the Father. I am the Son. I am the Holy Ghost. It's all in Jesus. I, I, I am he. He says, the comfort's going to come. He said, he said, i got to leave, but don't worry. I'll come again to you, but I'm going to come to you, to you in a form that doesn't have a purpose to die. Right. This flesh has to die. I dwell with you right now. This flesh is going to die, but one day it's going to die. But the Spirit, the Comforter, the, Lord's gonna, the, the Father's going to send you a Comforter that will be with you forever. Don't worry. I'm going to come to you. Basically, I'm going to come to you in another form. This form has a purpose. This form's purpose is to die. If this form doesn't die, you can't abide with. I can't abide with you forever. I can't come back to you if I don't go away. And he even says that in another scripture. Now, I'm going to bring this full circle. So, how is the word implanted in you? Engrafted in you. What is the engrafted word? What is it in you? 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. For this cause also thank we God without ceasing. Because when ye received the word of God, which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. Now he's speaking to the church. 
He's speaking to the church in Thessalonica. You, you believe the word, the word of God is in you and it's working in you. First Peter, and this is a very interesting portion of Scripture. First Peter chapter 1, verses 22 through 23. Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit, capital S. You've purified your soul. You've obeyed the truth through the Spirit. Unto unfeigned love of the brethren, see that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently. Look, listen, listen right here. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of uncorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. The word of God has no ending. It was at the beginning. And it's going to be at the end. There is no ending with the Word of God. But look what it said. He said, being born again by the Word of God. Now wait a minute. Now we have to go to John chapter 3. Because in John chapter 3, He says you must be born again of the Spirit. So are we born again of the Word? Or are we born again of the Spirit? Yes and yes. Because it's exactly the same thing. Here's, here's how it boils down. My dad's here. And he's talking to somebody about me. And so he says, Brother Duke, yeah, Jeff played ball in high school. My son Jeff played ball in high school. He was on the team, da 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 And my wife chimes in and said, yes, my husband did play ball and occasionally plays ball. You don't last very long anymore. And then Brother James says, yeah, pastor, pastor plays ball. I've seen him play ball. What's happening? Well, you've heard me described as son. You've heard me described as Jeff. You've heard me described as pastor. And you've heard me described as husband. But guess what? It's all me. Right? And so that's what's so incredibly beautiful when Jesus, when, when God spoke through the burning bush and he, and he told me, he said, tell them I am. I am everything that you need. Every piece and portion that you need. Okay, so, so right here, he says, be born again by the Word of God in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23. And John 3, 3 through 7, he says, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And, and what did he say in the beginning portion of Scripture? Ushering us into the kingdom of his dear son. Right? So how did that happen? Because what is the kingdom of God? It's not meat or drink, but peace, love, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Peace, love, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Now, don't let this confuse you. Stay with me. Number five, Jesus answered, verse five, Jesus answered, Verily, verily, the he except man be born of water and of the Spirit. He cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. Acts chapter 1, verse 4 through 8. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with the water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Verse 8. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me. Both in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and on the uttermost parts of the earth. Why is that important? The, the, the word witness here is important because then we go to 1 John chapter 5. We're just having fun with the word right now. I love this stuff. This, I'm, in brother, I'm in Brother Duke's field right now. 1 <laughs> John chapter 5 verse 6 through 8 says this. This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ. Not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit, capital S, that beareth witness. Did you catch me? We're talking about witness, right? He says, you're going to be witnesses unto me. Well, here he says, and it is the Spirit, capital S, that beareth witness, because the Spirit, what, what, uh, what? The Spirit is truth. Wait a minute. The Word is truth. Wait a minute. Jesus is truth. Wait a minute. That shouldn't be confusing. It's simple. Jesus is the truth. He is the Spirit. And He is the Word. Verse, chapter, uh, verse 7. For there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, 
and the Holy Ghost. Remember our little relationship demonstration I gave you? He's the Father in creation. He was the Word speaking life. Let there be. And then He is the Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit. He is holy in His Spirit. He is the Spirit from which all spirits come. Thus the capital S. So the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. Not three in one. These three are one. It's the same being. Okay? And then verse 8 he says, And there are three that bear witness in the earth. There's our witness. There are three that bear witness in the earth. The Spirit, capital S, and the water, and the blood, and these three agree in one. How do they agree in one? Because Jesus Christ shed His blood, huh? and out of His side flowed the blood and the water, and He was the Spirit, that He had the Spirit of God within Him. And so the three agreed in one, Jesus Christ. In one example, in one path, they agree in one. And so in heaven there's a record. Father, Word, Holy Ghost. In earth, there's a witness. Spirit, water, blood. Holy Ghost, baptism, repentance. One. The Holy Ghost in you is the engrafted, implanted Word of God. Now, that ought to make you feel a little important. Because God said, I'm going to put my word in you. When you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you're not just receiving the Spirit of God, you're receiving the Word. The same Word that said, let there be, is in you. That's why we say, be careful what you say. Lest you access that creative power of the Word that's in you do a whole lot of good or a whole lot of bad. Now, this is where it turns. And this is where the Lord spanked me a little bit yesterday. So I'm going to try to be more gentle with you, but I took my spanking, so take yours. Ain't that how we do with his kids? It's your turn. Daddy just got through with me and that's your turn. Don't you try to leave. I'll pull you in there. <laughs> if I had to get a spanking, you got to get one. It wasn't just me, Dad. Cliff did it too. Yeah, that's, what we, that's how we play it. I want to focus on this fact. He said he, was going, he has put His Word in you and it's able to save your soul. He's put His Word in you. Okay? Now, He's put His Word in you, but that don't mean you don't need to read His Word. And now, let me explain Rhema and Logos. The Rhema of God, the Word of God that's Rhema, is the spoken Word of God. The Logos is the written Word of God. And so, yes, the Logos is in you. I mean, sorry, I got the backwards. The Rhema is in you, but it's your job to put the Logos in you. He gives you the rhema, but it's your job to put in the logos. Now, this is these scriptures, John 14 and 15. And this is where he started spanking me. He didn't even have to do it hard. It hit, when the revelation struck me, I just wept like a baby. He said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. And I thought, I keep your commandments. I do love you. John 15, 10, he said, If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. And then in John chapter 8, 51 through 59, he says this, Verily, verily, I say unto you, if a man keep my saying, if he keep my saying, he shall never see death. Then said the Jews unto him, Now we know that thou hast the devil. Abraham is dead of the prophets. And thou said, If a man keep my saying, he shall never taste of death. Art thou greater than our father Abraham, which is dead? 
and the prophets are dead. Who make, whom makest thou thyself? And Jesus answers, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my Father that honoreth me, of whom ye say that if He is your God. Now listen to Jesus' words very carefully to these Pharisees. He just rips the cover right off of them. The guy you say you're God. Yet ye have not known Him, but I know Him. And if I should say... This is tough. If I, this is Jesus saying, if I, if I should say I know Him not, I shall be a liar like unto you. If I say I don't know, I'm lying like you. I'm a liar just like you. And I ain't like you. That's what Jesus said. But I know Him and keep His saying. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Now they're tripping on him. Now they're like, you're not 2,000 years old, dude. Then said Jesus to him, Thou art not yet 50 years old. And hast thou seen Abraham? Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. But did they grab some stones? They were ready to just tear him up. Took up they stones and cast at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. Couldn't catch him. And the complete Jewish Bible, verse 51, says, Yes, indeed, I tell you that who... Ever obeys my teaching will never see death. John chapter 14, verses 23 to 28. And this will be the last long portion of scripture I have for you. And this is where he begins to spank me. Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, remember the first question I asked everybody, Do you love Jesus? And I want you to know there's a unanimous 16 out of 16 said, I love Jesus. He will keep my words. Can you hear me? I know I'm getting a little noise, but do you hear me? This is, this is the most crucial part of everything I'm fixing to say to you. If a man love me, he will keep my words. And my Father will love him. And we will come unto him and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings. And the word which ye hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. And here's what you need to remember. You weren't standing there. He didn't say anything to you. You weren't the disciples that walked with Him for three and a half years. We weren't there. So how's the Holy Ghost going to remind us of what He said if we weren't there? The Holy Ghost can only remind you of what you've read. And if you're not reading, how can He remind you of anything? If He has nothing to pull from. Peace. I leave with you my peace. I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. If ye, ye have heard how I said unto you, I go away. And come again unto you. If ye loved me, ye would rejoice because I said I go unto the Father, for my Father is greater than I. You would rejoice because when I leave, I'm coming back and I'm coming back inside you. Instead of touching you from body to body, I'm going to get all up in your business. I'm going to be right there with you. You know, uh, instead of being three days' journey away, from Lazarus. I'm going to be in Lazarus. The word keep. In every portion of Scripture, it says, keep my commandments. Keep my sayings. Keep my word. Listen to this word keep. It is terio. 
And it means to watch as a guard. It says, in fact, I got that backwards. It says, a watch to guard. If I'm a guard, I have a set watch. It's my job to watch during this set time frame as a guard. So it says to guard. And it says to guard from loss or injury properly by keeping the eye upon. You with me? If you keep my sayings, you're going to keep your eye on my sayings. By implication, to detain or to maintain, to hold fast, to observe, preserve, and reserve. Keep my words. How many of you love Jesus? 16. Out of 16. How many of you have read through your Bible at least once from Genesis to Revelation? 8 out of 16. How many of you have read all the New Testament? 6 out of 16. How many of you have read all the New Testament? Did I say that already? Old and New Testament was the same. 6 of 16. How many of you read at least one chapter a day? There was only one. Two. How many of you have read at least one chapter a week? There was eight. Woo! Out of 16. So you have to do the next one in there to save us. How many of you read at least one verse a day? Eight out of 16. Now 16 of you said, I love Jesus. But for the most part, only 50% of you actually do. That's hard, ain't it? That's tough, ain't it? That hurts. Because how can we keep it if we never read it? Hmm? How can we keep it? How can we guard it and protect it from loss or injury if we don't keep an eye on it? How are we going to know if someone is abusing it, misusing it, or misrepresenting it if we don't know it ourselves? How can we observe it, preserve it, or reserve it if we don't ever open it, much less read it? How can we say then that we love Him if we do not read what He said, what He commanded, or what He taught? Because He said, if any man love me, he will keep my words. And I'm telling you, it's like the Holy Ghost sitting over my shoulder and I suddenly had a flash of every time that I've ever thought about reading it and I decided to do something else anyway. And he said, do you love me? And I broke like a baby because I realized how many times, and, and I, I read fairly a good amount, but I don't feel like I read enough. And I can tell you that my, most of my Saturdays are right here in this book. And, and, and yeah, I get ready, you know, I spend Wednesday nights getting ready for Thursday night and, I'm reading and I'm looking. But there are those times in my life where I could have read something in my downtime instead of decided to watch something. I could have read something in my downside and, and, and instead of decided to pop Hollywood in. Had all kind of hours at home being sick, and it's tough, tough to read when you're sick. I mean, it really is. I, when you're doubled over, you kind of you're going to be kind of entertained. Just entertain me or go to sleep. Something. But do I have to put Hollywood on to entertain me, or do I have the same access to YouTube that I put a preacher on? I find that a good choice this week, and I put a preacher on. And I, I'm just being transparent. The Lord leaned right over my shoulder, and. When I read that scripture, he will keep my words. If you love me, you'll keep my word. And yet I think about how many people don't even bring his word to church. Where are you, where are you keeping it? Do you know where it's at? If it's not here with you today, do you even know where it's at in your house? Do you know where you left it? Did you lose it? I'm guilty. I left my Bible in Brother Nero's car several months ago. But I got my back up. 
So I left one Bible. I called him, bro, I left my sword. Okay, well, it's been a month. We ain't been able to get up. But I got my other sword. Where do you keep it? This ain't the fun part. But he said, if you love me. That's like having a girlfriend. Or having a wife. And you love her, but you don't talk to her all day long. Or if you love her, what do you do? Every break, every moment, you text, you call, you're talking to her. You don't let a day go by without talking to her. You don't let a day go by without talking to him. And yet, First, Second Timothy two fifteen says, "Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth." We weren't there when He spoke the word. When He said, "The Comforter is going to remind you of everything I taught you," we weren't there for that teaching. The only way we're going to get us by a man. Or by opening our book to read it. And we've made excuses. Well, I, I, hey, I'm chief. I don't have a good long term memory. I don't. I, it, I, I've been asking for an upgrade for years. Jesus can have an upgrade. People like Brother Duke and my, my brother in law, uh, Philip, those guys, it's like they read it one time, man. It's one time and they can quote something from way back under. Me? If I wanted to know it like that, I'd have to sit here and read it one time, read it again, read it a third time. Read it again, read it again. What was that last part? Okay. I'd work on one one little, it takes me a long time to memorize one scripture. It, that's my, my, my just way my part. Now, numbers, I can spit numbers out. I can see a number and I can tell it to you in a second what it was. I can, it was like 67 and I hadn't seen it but one time and it walked. But, but, uh, text or wording, reading. It don't, I don't have a photographic memory. Some of my brothers do, and sometimes I'm envious of them. But Lines is one of those guys. Man, you can tell them too. When they teach, you just get up there and sling it out there. Now what happens though? When I'm preaching and teaching and scriptures come to my head, guess why they're coming? The Holy Ghost. Why? Because I read it once or twice. And I put it in there. So he's just pulling out what I put in there. But if I don't put anything in there, it's like, uh, the Holy Ghost wants to say something, but, uh, uh, I guess it ain't in there. I've got nowhere to draw from. And then, brother, and, and, and I'm just going to tell you, I met Brother Duke in the hallway this morning, and I said, bro, what you got? And then I told him, I said, I've been on this engrafted word. And he goes, oh, that's exactly what I was on. And then I felt the release. In the mouths of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. God is saying the same thing to all of us. we got to get in here. we got to read. we got to be equipped. we got to be ready. And I'm not saying that you have to memorize the whole thing. But what I am saying to you is read it. And, and uh, you know, Leslie came by last night with Penny. And, and we were praying with her. He was telling me, man, I'm into Leviticus. I, I've been reading. I, I read through Genesis. I'm in Leviticus. Man, I like to jump and do the hallelujah. Awesome. He made me a proud pastor right there. Woo! <laughs> Leslie's into Leviticus. I said, dude, that's a tough one for anybody, man. I said, you hang on. you got to read it like three times. You just hang in there. I said, now, I give a pass like I give myself a pass. When you get to the begots, you just kind of skip them. <laughs> until you're studying and need to know who came from who and then you go back. But it's okay just to skip them. Pastor give you a bypass on the begots. But when he told me he was reading and he had done read the New Testament, he started back in the old... Man, I was so happy. Yeah. It made my night. I'm like, I, somebody's listening and doing it. But if you read your word, even if you don't remember it all, if you just read it, when you need it, or when He needs you to need it, He can, by the Holy Ghost, bring it back. You can let the capital W in you reflect the uh, Logos that you've been planting in there. He, he'll, the two agree. 
and agree in one. So we need to study to show ourselves approved. Now, you know, I, I, like I said, I don't, I don't have a great long-term memory. It takes a lot for me to memorize things, but I can read. I can read. And there are times I can pick my Bible up and I'm, I'm going I'm, I'm to at least get me a chapter in. I'm tired. And I'll, I'll pick that Bible up and I'll start reading it and man, stuff starts leaping up out of there. And five chapters later, I'm like, oh, I better go to bed. Because you get pulled into Him. You get pulled into His realm. He talked to you. But man, I can't tell you how grieved I was in my spirit when the Holy Ghost leaned over to me and said, every time... And basically, that's what it felt to me. But basically, the Holy Ghost was like, you know, when you when you uh, picked your Bible up and thought, well, maybe I'll watch something instead. And He just said, if you love me, you'll keep my words. If you love me, you'll keep my words. And I wept because I know there's been times in my life where I've let my flesh win and I put my Bible down. Or I, I went to sleep or whatever it was. You ever notice when you're reading your Bible, all of a sudden you, you just get started and a big old yawn breaks out of nowhere? In fact, I had some, one brother tell me, he said, hey man, if I, if I can't sleep good, I'll just pick my Bible up and start reading. I'll go to sleep shortly. Hey, work that thing. Your flesh don't want to do it. Well, before bed, pick it up, start reading and let it give you a lullaby right to sleep, but at least the word's getting in there. Okay? Let's stand together. Uh, today was a little different, but I'm trying to get used to different. It's good to get used to different. I knew today it was going to be just us when I was heading down the highway. I said, something's a little different in the air today. It's kind of chill. We've been, all this rain and the lethargy that comes with it and the sleepiness that comes with it and the yawning that comes with it and I don't feel like doing nothing that comes with it because you really can't do much. And so you think we're affected. That's why so many seats are empty because those who don't have the Spirit, who don't have responsibilities, who don't have a real, real, true relationship with God, they're not here today because they got used to sleeping in through the rain. <laughs> it, doesn't, it, doesn't, it doesn't put them to sleep. My sister Tammy did text me a little bit ago and said that she's come down with the same stomach virus that some of us have gone through. So let's pray for her. She was going to be here this morning. <clears throat> and we want to make sure we pray for her that God bring healing to her. I just want you to understand that if you love Him, you will read your Bible. And he said, if you love me, we'll just put in the 21st century, if you love me, read my Bible. If you love me, read my Word. If you love me, read my Bible. It's the best book out there. It's the number one seller. It's a good book. Where do I start? I don't care. Just open and read. If you've never read all the way through, just start at Genesis and make your way through. I've got my chronological Bible sitting over here, and I, my goal was I'm going to read this when I don't have necessarily any spiritual direction for anything I need to study or prepare for. I'm just going to read. And that's pretty cool, read through the chronological stuff. It makes us kings and chronicles and all kinds of stuff together. It gives you a nice full picture. But just read, just read, just read, just read. And, and Brother Duke heard the same thing. It came out of the, of the last lesson. I closed on that scripture, I believe. And it hooked him and it hooked my spirit too. We need to talk about the right before service. And so I just started digging on this and grafting this and planting. What do you mean? What are you saying? And so this is where he took us today to keep. I've implanted it in you. Now keep my logos. Keep my written word. So we need to just make a commitment to the Lord that we're going to do a better job. I do love you. And I'm going to read your word. I want to know more about you. Don't, lean, don't, don't wait for some preacher. Don't let the only time you hear the word read or, or anything be right here on Sunday and on Thursday. That, that just don't do, folks. You'd starve if you ate like that. 
I might could use that a little, you know, those little wings. But you would starve if you tried to live that way. Two meals out of a whole week. So what are you doing to your spirit man? You're starving that fellow. And then you're cramming stuff. Ooh, sometimes we're cramming stuff down his face that he don't even want to see. I'm just saying. I'm as guilty as sin. Amen. Let's just take a few moments to pray and just make just repent for not doing as much as we should do. It. And let's make some commitments to God that I'm gonna get in your word, I'm gonna learn about you. Come on, let's pray.